Imagine, 18 years old, thinking you're going pro, and your college coach says he doesn't want you. Now get out of my office. Friday night football it doesn't get any better than that in cast. Everything pretty much gets shut down. Everybody goes to the football games. I actually got moved up as a freshman. I was really not wanting to get the ball at all. I didn't want to play offense at all. So when he told me I was going in after halftime, I was nervous, shaking. The first play was a lead right, I think. That takes me through the three hole and I got bumped a few times coming straight out the line and made it past a few people. And my mom is running with me from one end to the field to the next. Yeah, look how loud it running with me. I scored the first time I touched the ball, and from then on, I was the running back. All eyes were on me from then on. So I knew things were changing and people were looking at me and kids would have my name on their back. I would come home from school or practice. And my little brother's at home watching my highlight films. My mom, um, she just missed a game one day. After the game, they told me she was in the hospital and this and that and I don't know. I might get busted, I don't know. Right now she has a something in her heart that pumps medicine in her 24 hours a day. She couldn't work anymore, and we was living in an apartment complex. We, no food, no nothing. Cause at first they wouldn't give her no disability, not, nothing. So we was just struggling. She can't work cause she can't breathe like she's supposed to. So I knew I had to grow up. A lot of people still to this day talk bad to me or tell me that I'm doing, making the wrong decisions and this and that. But you never know if somebody struggled until you sit down and talk to them. They really never came inside our home. No one ever knew. They just see a kid playing football. After high school, everybody just talked bad about me not playing football no more. I don't really want to go far and play big D1 football now because I don't want the call saying my mom's sick and I have to get on a plane, get on the bus, and go home, and now I don't make it, and she's gone, and I never wanted that to happen, so college was, I don't know. I didn't know who I was. I was trying to figure it out. I went back home and started hanging out in the apartment complex all the time, and drinking, and out all night. There's police over there all the time, so it was just a lot going on, so I had to really sit back and think on what I was gonna do next because I wasn't planning on being at that apartment complex. My grandparents, they knew you're gonna go to jail. That's what they were telling me. I felt like a bum, not doing nothing. It took me a long time to just decide, hey, go cut here. Because I was the only one with some clippers, so people were like, line me up before this basketball game, all through high school, so it was super frustrating. Because not, not just football, I was always good at everything I did. It didn't matter, so. When I got to cutting hair, I wasn't so good. <laughs> that was real frustrating. I just had to walk by faith, believing that I could be a barber. Cause I've messed up heads. I wasn't that good when I started, but I had to keep going and keep practicing, keep getting better, believe that this day would be here, that I would have a barbershop, I would have a decent clientele base. Now I'm just somebody in the community. I go to football games on Friday nights, support cast. I was Ranger born and Ranger bred. You gotta walk by faith, not by sight. I tell everybody that on the regular. I express that to people all the time because you gotta have a belief. You gotta have faith that the things are gonna happen. People can't see oxygen, but it's still there. You're still breathing. I do believe God is working wonders through me. He's showing me the right way now.